This morning in our Eye on Earth series, we're walking among giants, not the mythical creatures, but ancient trees. The huge sequoia groves of California draw millions of tourists a year, but these forests are more than photo opportunities. They're longtime warriors in the battle against climate change. Jonathan Vigliotti climbed with scientists to dizzying heights to see how the changing climate may be taking its toll. Good morning. We're here in the Sequoia National Park, perched upon one of the largest trees in the world, which just so happens to be a cloud hugging laboratory for scientists studying the impacts of climate change. From the air, the breathtaking beauty of the Sierra Nevada covers up an ugly statistic. The Forest Service estimates that about 130 million trees died in the state of California during this drought. 130 million. 130 million. From a million. lack of water. Yeah. We're going up this watershed here, not too Tree far. ecologists One Anthony Ambrose and Wendy Baxter way. have been working throughout that drought, which lasted from late 2010 to earlier this year. It's not much further. But they haven't been studying the pines, firs, and cedars that died. They've been analyzing the world famous monsters that survived the giant sequoias, the largest living creatures on Earth. They've been living and growing in the same place, some of them for thousands of years. But even these giants have an Achilles heel. Yeah, their demand for water. We've measured that an individual giant sequoia tree uses up to a thousand gallons of water in a single day. If that water supply diminishes, and there, there's going to be an impact on the trees eventually. Really puts everything into perspective. Yeah. Doing science way out here means more than just a strenuous hike. In fact, that's just the beginning. Most of the action is happening up in the canopies. That's where all of the leaves are. So you had to go up. We had to go up. Okay, Wendy, I'm heading up. Since 2015, they've been scaling trees like this one, 250 feet high, in order to record the drought's impact on their health and growth. On this day, they brought me along for the climb. Up we go. Up we go. How many times at your peak were you climbing up a tree? So I think my record for one day was seven climbs. Seven climbs? Yep. Oh, and already exhausted. I always love being up here. Pack bus address one. High above, Ambrose got to work, downloading data from a science station they previously installed. Did the side branches need to be cut fairly close? Yes. While Wendy gathered branch samples to be examined fancy. back in a lab. This is my Jack and the Beanstalk moment for real. It took a little over an hour. But I eventually joined the pair in the deceptive safety of the tree's canopy. Kind of a terrifying place to be doing some science. What has your data that you've collected so far, what has the data told you? They are really good at uh, minimizing how much water they lose under drought conditions by shutting down the little tiny pores in their leaves. Those tiny pores are also what allows them to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It sounds like they're shut down for business. When yeah, they shut carbon down. Dioxide. Yeah, so they don't take up as much carbon dioxide. And that's troubling for two reasons. The less carbon dioxide trees capture and store, the more of the heat trapping gas that stays in the atmosphere, fueling global warming. Also, the trees use carbon dioxide as food to grow. Ambrose and Baxter have also taken from the sequoias core samples, basically long, thin strips of wood from deep inside the tree they can use to determine its age and growth. So you can see it goes all the way back. 1900, yeah. 1300. Labs are still analyzing them, but some of those cores are already telling a story. So these three lines very close together indicate not a lot of growth in that period of time? Exactly, yeah. So because this was, of the drought. Yeah, exactly. But climate is changing. So what does that mean for a tree like the sequoia that has very specific needs in order to survive the way that it has for so long? Yeah, every organism has thresholds that they can't survive. As it gets hotter, the snow is going to melt earlier and there's going to be less water available for these trees. And it may not be a place that they can continue to grow mm -hmm. into the future. Many of these trees have been alive since before the Roman Empire, which means civilization literally grew up around them. Ambrose and Baxter are now studying the impacts that civilization is having on these trees' very existence.
Wow, what a wow. great piece. Yeah, what an am amazing. And what amazing concept yeah. when you think about that, you know. Pretty good interview location. The deceptive yeah. safety of the canopy. Yeah. The I fact think. that those trees know how to shut themselves down in order to survive. Yeah. And then the people that are doing the work, the passion that they have to have to yeah. do that. We'll miss those trees if we lose them. Yeah, but they need, as they said, up to 1,000 gallons of water a day. Wow. For one tree.